Hi there everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at subroutines. It's something that has been asked for quite a lot and the last update brought some improvements to subroutines. So in this two part video we're going to take a look at subroutines themselves, how to use them, why you might want to use them and then we'll also look at the improvements that were made in the last update and how to use the new addition which is parameters. Just a reminder if you like the video or get anything out of it please click the like button and if you haven't done already if you are new here please click the subscribe button will help me on my way to my first target of 1000 subscribers and don't forget you can click the follow button to get notifications of all the latest videos when they're released anyway come on let's crack on and get on with subroutines So if you're a programmer already, you'll probably know what a subroutine is and how to use them in your programs, not portal programs perhaps, but other programs. So for you, much of the start of this video will probably already be known and I'll get on to how to set them up in portal shortly. And you can skip ahead if you wish to, to the section that you need uh, using the chapter markers at the bottom. But for others, just a little introduction to what a subroutine is might help. Now, before I begin, please don't be overwhelmed. Take your time to go through the video. Try to listen carefully. As if you're not a programmer some of the things that we cover in this video can initially look a little bit complicated they aren't but you do just need a little bit of time and practice and once you understand what a subroutine is the most difficult part about using subroutines is really just thinking about where you're going to use them and how to set them up but if you force yourself to practice you're going to get better with time so just take your time as you go through this and try to introduce subroutines slowly into your programs so what is a subroutine? We've got a subroutine in portal set up on the screen in front and you can see we have the mod on the right hand side with two rules in it and on the left hand side we have this subroutine. And if we're going to say what a subroutine is, well a subroutine is just a block of code that we wish to repeat. Uh, so we want to use over and over again and we give that block of code a name. So in this case, we've got a subroutine. It's got a block of code in it that we may want to repeat. We have given it the name or identifier. This is a subroutine. And then if we ever want to run that subroutine, all we have to do is put its name in the program where we want it to run. So in this case, we have an ongoing rule just here. And when we call the this is a subroutine subroutine, we are going to jump to here, run this code and then come back. So a subroutine is just a block of code or set of instructions that we wished to run repeatedly. It is given a name or identifier and it is run or called by putting its name in a rule or a program statement. So the other term that we're going to use in this video is parameter. Now we do have a lot of these terms in programming that sound a little bit complicated, but they aren't. So a parameter is just a value or an item of data that gets passed to a subroutine from the program where it calls it. Now I'm not going to go into any great detail with that here because we're going to experiment with parameters a little later on, but just know that a parameter is just an item of data or a value that gets passed to a subroutine and we'll see that later on in the video. So before we just jump in and look at some practical examples and how to set up subroutines, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've never used subroutines. Um, all of my experiences are working perfectly fine. Why on earth would I use subroutines? And it's a perfectly good question. Well, to put it simply, if you split up your code into subroutines, you are going to end up with code that is a lot more organized than it was previously. You're going to save yourself some time because in places where you need to duplicate code, we can instead shift that out into a subroutine and save ourselves a little bit of time. And it's also going to make your code easier to debug, that is to find errors in it because everything is going to be in a separate subroutine or a lot of things are going to be in separate subroutines with each one doing an individual task. And it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to identify where problems are when they arise. So let's crack on and have a look at how to create some subroutines and some little examples for you to get started. So for our first example, we're going to create a very simple version of a gun roulette type mode. And in this mode that we're going to create, the player is going to get a new random loadout. So that's going to consist of a primary weapon, a secondary weapon and a throwable weapon from a selection that we've created. Uh, and they are going to get that new random loadout each time they spawn in 
or if they get a kill. So it's going to change every time they get a kill or it's going to change randomly after a certain period of game time. Now you can see on the screen, we've got a rule just up at the top left hand corner. And this is our initialize game rule. If you like, and you can see in here, we have set the game modes. Let's zoom in a little bit actually. You can see we've set the game mode time limit to be 600 seconds. The game mode target score to be 100 doesn't really matter. It's kind of irrelevant. And then we've set up multiple empty arrays for our primary weapon list, our secondary weapon list, and our throwable weapon list. If you're going to do this, you can obviously make these weapons whatever you want. And if you're interested to know what's going on here, it might be worth looking at my introduction to arrays video just to help you understand what's going on. However, this is a sort of initialize game routine. You can see it's doing multiple things. We're going to move this into a subroutine in a moment. So let's start off by organizing this initialize game rule into a set of separate subroutines to make it a little bit more organized. We're going to set ourselves up four separate subroutines, one that sets up the initial game settings, one that sets up the primary weapon list, another for the secondary weapon list, and a final one for the throwable weapon list. Of course, we could place them all in one subroutine, but why not create multiple ones with each one doing a separate thing? And we know exactly where we need to go if we need to make alterations later on. So to create a subroutine, let's do subroutine. We're gonna create four subroutines. We're gonna have one that initializes uh, oh, main game settings and you can't have any spaces in subroutine names just remember that don't need any parameters just at the moment so let's create the other subroutines as well so we're going to have set up primary uh, list or primary weapon list uh, create subroutines set up secondary list and one last one for the throwballs create subroutine set up throwable list there we go create now it's going to place those blocks somewhere just out over here so we've got our four new subroutines i'll just move them there a little bit i'll zoom in a moment once we uh, get ourselves sorted so you can see what's going on so we've got four separate subroutines and we're going to move this entire big block just here over into separate subroutines so let's move it out block at a time We've got the throwable list just here. Well, this is the block of code that sets up the list of weapons for throwable items. So let's just move that over here and place it into that subroutine. We've got this block here that sets up the secondary weapons. Let's just move that down a little bit so it doesn't get in the way. So we'll move that block over here into the setup secondary list. And we might need to move those down a little bit more we're going to do the same for the primary weapon list. Let's drag that and drop that in there. And then we have one last subroutine for these basic little main game settings. And there you go. We've got our four separate subroutines. I can move these a little bit closer in now so we can see that all together. There we go. So four separate subroutines uh, to set up the initial settings in the game. Now, all that remains to do is to make sure that these four subroutines run the same way as they did before. And as we've said, in order to run a subroutine, we just need to place its name in the program statement. So just in this rule, let's go into subroutines. Here are our four subroutines. So we'll drag in initialize game settings, set up primary list, set up secondary list, and last but not least, set up throwable list. So what we've done there is we've moved all of those commands out of this rule. We have placed them into four separate subroutines, each one doing a separate or individual task, initialize the main game, set up the primary weapon list, the secondary weapon list, and the throwable list. And then in the rule that is meant to run those commands, we have called each one of those subroutines separately. Now you can see hopefully straight away what advantage we've got out of this. Now we can move these subroutines around the screen and organize them in a way that we weren't able to do before. We can see each little individual block. I know it's quite difficult to see them if I zoom all the way out, but we can see each individual little block 
uh, separately. So if there's an error somewhere, we're going to be able to find that relatively quickly because we'll know which subroutine it was in and we can put in some error checking to find that. And also um, the error checking in portal will also tell you which subroutine an error occurred in. And also, if we just click on subroutines, we get a list of all of the separate subroutines here. And as we add more, we're going to be able to see them. And if we want to go to a specific subroutine, let's say we know we want to add something to the secondary weapon list, we can open that and click on jump to subroutine and it will immediately show us that subroutine on the screen. And it doesn't really matter where we are. If I just throw them all the way out there, uh, I think that's as far as we can go for now. Uh, yeah, they're up at the top, but if we click on subroutines, let's say we want to alter the initial game settings. If we jump to the subroutine, it's going to bring it to the center of the screen. So we get the advantage of more organized code and we can arrange it on the screen however we want. And we've got everything kind of nice and neatly organized. Now, what if we wanted to get rid of some of this duplicate code? Now, if we look here, you can see do we have three separate rules, each one effectively doing the same thing. So when the player deploys, we want to replace their primary, secondary and throwable inventory and display a game mode message. If they earn a kill, exactly the same thing, it's going to swap out the loadout. And if a certain amount of time has passed, replace their inventory again. Well, that seems a little bit pointless, doesn't it? We've got the same block of code repeated three times. What if we were to move this into a separate subroutine and replace all of these three sets or blocks of code with one subroutine and just call the subroutine when we want it. Now, just a mention here about parameters. We are going to need a parameter in order for this to work because in order to replace a player's inventory, we need to know which player's inventory we are replacing. So as we do this, I'll just discuss that as well and how we can find out who the event player is. It's really quite easy. So let's create the subroutine first. OK, so we're going to go into subroutines. We're going to create the subroutine and we're going to put replace, uh, spell it correctly, that would help, replace player loadout. And we don't need to add a parameter. Uh, for this one, it's a bit weird, but we don't need the parameter. We're just going to click create and let's find out where it's put that subroutine. Let's put that one on the top. Just actually, no, let's place it underneath. That makes a bit more sense. Um, so let's just move around a little bit. Quite difficult to see. So we've got these three blocks of code. Let's just drag this one at the bottom. We only need one example of it in this subroutine. So let's get this one. We're going to take all of that code there, which is the same as the other two at the top. And we're just going to drop that into this subroutine, replace player loadout. Now, once we've done that, we don't need any of these other blocks of code because what we can do instead is we can just call that subroutine inside the rule that we want it to run from and it will jump to this block of code and run it. So let's just delete all of the commands out of these rules and replace them. Let's just move that up a little bit with the name of the subroutine that we want to run instead that contains all of the code that we need for this particular rule to work. So we've moved all three of the blocks of code, the duplicated blocks of code out of those rules into a single subroutine. And then we are in each of these rules, just calling that subroutine and the effect will be exactly the same. Now you might be asking yourself, where does the event player come from? Because how does this subroutine know which player needs to have their inventory replaced? Well, as it happens, subroutines in portal already get past some standard parameters. So some standard information and that information is whatever the event payloads are for that event. Now the event payloads for each one of these rules includes the event player. So you can see when a player is deployed, the event payload, one of the payloads that comes with it is the event player. When they earn a kill, we know which players earn the kill. That's one of the event payloads. And the ongoing rule also includes the event payload player. Let's just have a look at this rule, help we can see that. So on player earned kill, scroll down a little bit, look on player deployed. This will trigger whenever a player deploys, payloads, event player. On player earned kill, 
payloads event player. So you can see these rules already have inside them the event payload, which is the event player. And when we call a subroutine from that rule, the event player gets passed automatically to the subroutine. There is no need to define our own parameters. And so that's it. We're just coming to the end of the first part of this two part video on introduction to subroutines in Portal. And we've had a look at how to create subroutines and hopefully you now understand how they're created in Portal and why they might be useful for you in your own experiences or in your own modes and seeing some of the benefits in terms of being able to rearrange them on the screen, find code very quickly and help you with some debugging. What I'd ask you to do now as your part in this is perhaps go away and try and experiment experiment a little bit with subroutines if you haven't used them before. So maybe create a couple of subroutines for your own experiences. Don't necessarily have to make use of parameters or anything like that. Maybe just look at moving one or two blocks of code out of your main rules section into a separate subroutine and call in that subroutine from the main rules and see how it goes. See how you get on. For the second part of this video, we're going to have a deeper look at subroutines. We are going to look at the new introduction of custom parameters and see how that works, uh, which was a brilliant addition just recently. And we'll also uh, play around with subroutines a little bit and see how far we can go. In the meantime, if there is something you would like me to cover specifically in the second part, please do mention that in the comments below. I am just putting the script together for that, so I would be keen to know what you'd like me to look at specifically. And also, if you found this video useful, please do click the like button. Any likes really help me with the YouTube algorithm, so I would be very grateful. And of course, if you've got this far, which most people don't do, if you could just click that subscribe button if you haven't done already. I would also be very thankful to everybody that does do that. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me get towards my next targets for subscribers. Right, everyone, won't be long for the next video. Um, I'm just working on the script now, so let me know what you think. And take care, everybody. I will see you next time. See you later. Tara. You were unlucky, dude. Yeah. I'll get you up. Fuck off. Thank you. My little beastie got him. Thank you.